Life can only be understood backwards, but it must be lived forwards. Soren Kierkegaard. One of the best ways to plan your business's success is to study the success of other companies and their history. Today, we continue in that study with a new series on Coca Cola. In today's Straight Shot episode, coming right up. Welcome to Straight Shot. Marketing is everywhere. It's around your life, from what you eat to what you wear and where you go. It is a vital part of any and all business. Let's discuss the world of marketing and business as it influences everyday life with the staff of Atlanta Marketing Agency, Reformation Productions, and guests as they give it to us straight. Get ready. Take aim. Steady. Welcome to Straight Shot. Welcome everyone. A while back, Zachary started a blog series that went through some of the largest, most successful brands in the world. Since moving to the video and podcast formats, we studied Harley Davidson as another successful company that we could learn from in mapping out uh, successes for newer businesses. Today we start the Coca-Cola series. We are. We're doing Coca-Cola. You're dressed for it. I am. I'm wearing a Coca-Cola shirt today. For those of you that cannot see, I am mixing a little bit of Coca-Cola with a little bit of Las Vegas. I have a (laughs) glittery shirt on. Some people may not remember that Coca-Cola used to, in the 80s, they they were very popular to have Coca-Cola branded clothing. I think it's still popular. Thank you very much. I think I'm still (laughs) on trend, as the kids would say. I'm on fleek. Are we saying fleek still? I don't know. It sounds so 2010. I have no idea. But we're going to go through uh, several of the reasons why Coca-Cola is a successful brand and how they are managed to stay successful as a business. So let's get started. While Coca-Cola may have stumbled onto their product, they certainly did not stumble onto their brand. Their brand has been carefully crafted and maintained through professional, proactive teamwork over the course of many, 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 many years. Uh, but let's start from the beginning on that one. Zachary. Uh, well, in 1886, Coca-Cola is the invention of a pharmacist named John Pemberton. He was known as Doc, and like many of the other people that were around him at the time, he served in the Civil War. Now, if at the end of the Civil War, uh, the South was in pretty dire circumstances. Their economic conditions were not the best. So he decided that he wanted to invent something that would bring him commercial success to uh, to himself and his family. Why not, right? Hmm. However, everything he made failed in the pharmacies. <laughs> I'm not saying he was a bad pharmacist, but he hadn't hit it yet. He invented many, many drugs, but none of them ever made him any money. But after a move to Atlanta to take place in the New South, Pemberton decided to try his hand in the beverage market. Now, something that's interesting about this that I read about is, uh, okay, so as Zachary mentioned, John Pemberton was a lieutenant colonel, actually, in the Civil War. And uh, while he was in the Civil War, he was injured. And during his injury, well, the medics gave him morphine for the pain. I don't know what he had as far as an injury goes. Maybe somebody listening at home can correct me. Um, but he, he, they gave him morphine, and good old Doc Pemberton got quite addicted to the morphine, and uh, had had a. It, it has that uh, it side effect. Tends to do that, <laughs> um, but nonetheless, it, it did work in staving off the pain for him. But in his effort to come clean from the addiction to morphine, he wanted to invent a drink that would be as effective as morphine without all the. Sure, sure. Still trying to do the the drug medicine. Yeah, I mean, obviously, with a pharmaceutical background, this is where his head was at. But he was like, man, if I could invent something that would help with the pain that did not have all the addictive side effects of morphine, that would be fantastic. So John Pemberton decided to create this tonic that was called tonic French wine, I think. And um, it had a mixture of wine plus other things in it that had sort of like a an analgesic property to it, kind of like morphine for pain. And it was sold over the counter. Obviously had wine in it, so it did have alcohol in it. People liked it. The problem was is that it was a very, very close replica of something else that was already on the market. Vin Mariani already had a tonic wine, French tonic wine on the market that did the same thing. 
Well, you know, if you can uh, go onto our Facebook and see the marketing at the time between John Pemberton and Vin Mariani, they were quite sore about that, actually, Vin Mariani was, because uh, uh, John Pemberton had all these little pop-up stands trying to sell his wine using marketing, even though people thought that it might be too close to Vin Mariani's. So Atlanta had decided, as part of the temperance movement at that time, to go dry. Yes, no alcohol for you. Yes, and Doc could no longer use wine as the basis for his concoction. So what he decided to do was he, well, Vin Mariani ended up kind of rolling up their carpets a little bit. So that gave John Pemberton kind of like a, an open market. And so what he decided to do was he decided to use the flavors that he had put together to mask the taste of the coca leaf and the co cola nut into a new beverage that used soda water as its base. So he replaced the wine with, with the coca leaf and the cola nut. Are you starting to see the words coming together now? Coca and cola? <laughs> Anyways, that made it um, carbonated and that made it uh, very pleasing and sugary. And so basically what you're doing is you're replacing a lot of the wine with sugar water, uh, caffeinated sugar water. Since temperance was keeping patrons out of the bars, making a soda fountain drink just made sense. Pemberton dispatched runners from his basement to Willis Venable's soda fountain. I think I'm saying that right. Venable? Uh, Venable. Venable? 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 I don't know. I don't the wrong know. I, didn't, I didn't know him. The wrong emphasis on the wrong syllable? <laughs> Anyways, he uh, dispatched runners from his basement to this gentleman's soda fountain, a very popular soda bar on the first level of Jacob's Pharmacy with small samples of him, of his concoction for taste tests by the consumer. Okay, so let's stop. Okay, that's a lot of history. It's a lot of history coming oh, it at is, you. It's an awful lot. Yeah. So uh, let's talk about what we've learned so far. So first, he was aware of his economic environment, right? So he knew um, the dire straits after um, the Civil War, and he knew that the temperance movement had just made his new product, which was alcohol, not function. Adapt and overcome, so he says. It's exactly what he decided to do. Now, you can stay uh, today, you can stay, uh, you know, abreast of what's going on in your industry's environment by joining an industry association. Um, the, for, there's a lawyer's association, there's a um, there's associations for there's associations for janitors because uh, we have a client that was custodial engineer. We have a client that's in the um, the maid service. She owns a, a maid service uh, business, and I went to speak at the association for those. So there's an association for just about any industry. There's also trade magazines, um, right? There are. There's, you could subscribe to industry magazines, industry websites because a lot of stuff has moved away from print. Um, and also, simply networking with other business owners in your area, you can get a feel for what's going on in your local economy. Rubbing elbows. Right. Uh, it's really all about research, observation, paying attention, and then Listening. brainstorming brainstorming on what you should do based on those conditions. Professionally, we call this conducting a market analysis. So we recently conducted a marketing analysis for a new company that had the idea for developing a QuickBooks service company. In that analysis, we looked at the local economy, uh, the need for his proposed service, what he wanted to do. We looked at his competition, and we looked at his potential customers and what they would be looking for in a new service built in his niche so in his niche if you will what uh what would they be looking for um so we looked at all of those things inside of our marketing analysis now with coke pemberton took his lightning in a bottle idea right and he tested it see what you did there in the marketplace <laughs> What, with the bottle? Yeah. yeah. You're, so, you're clever. Uh, you're clever. Um, so this is what we now call consumer research. Mm -hmm. All right. So we have lots of tools and methods that we use for consumer research, including uh, man on the street taste tests like he used, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we have focus groups. We have web surveys. We have lots of different tools that we use to, to measure the, um, the consumer and their opinions on things. Gathering input from your potential customer base is imperative when getting to know them and starting to you know, develop a customer profile. 
Uh, at Reformation, this is part of the listen stage of straight line marketing. So with Coca-Cola in their earlier years, they're following right along with this and they're, they're, they're establishing best practices that we use today, right? Right. Well, that's the official story from Coca-Cola. <laughs> But legend has it that Doc was still developing drugs. Now we get to the saucy part of the story. Yes, this is the gossip. Uh, legend has it that Doc was still developing drugs and that his syrup, or syrup, I think that's the theme of this show, syrup? is pronouncing syrup? all these words differently, <laughs> and that his syrup was being made as a remedy for headaches. Then Venable, the guy from the basement Venable. before, Venable, the soda fountain shop owner, accidentally served the new syrup with carbonated water instead of tap water, and poof, Coca-Cola was born. But the company maintains that that's just a rumor, and that the plan from the very start was to squirt it into a glass and spritz it with cold carbonated water from the fountain. Either way, this is how Coca-Cola was born. However, Pemberton had no idea how to market his business. And why would he? So he partnered with Frank Robinson. Pemberton understood one of the most important aspects of owning and running a business was communicating his business to the public. Communicating your business is what fuels the operation of the business and it keeps your doors open. So with product in hand, he took the initiative to hire someone to help him do just that. Now Robinson registered Coca-Cola's formula with the patent office. He also designed the famous Coca-Cola logo and script mm -hmm. font. Ooh. And he wrote the very first Coca-Cola tagline. Now, Zachary, do you know what Coca-Cola's very first tagline was? Yes. Of course you do. But let's <laughs> pretend like you don't. Uh, does anybody else that's listening, do you guys know what the very first Coca-Cola tagline was? I mean, obviously over the years they've changed it a couple, couple times. But the very first tagline was Coca-Cola the pause that refreshes. Yep. So obviously he did a lot of things for establishing the brand uh, that we've come to know as Coca-Cola. So that is lesson number three. Dun, dun, understanding, dun. understanding the need to tell people about your business in addition to running your business. So Pemberton knew that he was not an expert in marketing. He was an expert in pharmacy. Science nerd. So he outsourced this, very important aspect. He outsourced this to a professional who was an expert in business communications. Marketing nerd. So, so today we have marketing agencies that are devoted to business communications and the best ways to accomplish getting a company's story out there to the public. So we do the same sort of thing today. Now, we didn't talk about how he sidestepped the vendors that could have promised to do different aspects of communicating his business. We'll just note that he hired someone that understood the big picture, all of it, and then how to accomplish that big picture for the success in the business. Okay, well let's take a quick break to hear from our sponsor and then we'll be right back to get the straight shot from today's episode. Dun, dun, dun. Straight Shot is brought to you by Reformation Productions, a full service marketing agency in Atlanta, Georgia, helping companies promote and communicate their business in the most efficient and effective ways possible through straight line marketing. Find out more by visiting reformationpro.com or call 678-825-8086. Reformation Productions, think in straight lines. So these are the first few lessons we can pull from the Coca-Cola story. Number one, base your business on the needs of your prospective customers. Right. They couldn't drink alcohol because of temperance, so they had to come up with something that they could drink. Two, product testing. Make sure that what you are offering is something that your customers want to buy. Duh. <laughs> Three, last but not least for today. Business has two sides, innovation and communication. That's right. Pemberton handled the innovation and partnered with an expert to handle communication, the marketing of his business. Mm -hmm. Many business owners don't launch their idea as clinically as Coca-Cola says that they did. Mm -hmm. 
So often the idea will come as a surprise, uh, much like the rumor that Coca-Cola denounces. I'm sure there's three sides to that story. However, the idea is born. That's what matters. And it's delicious. Right. Um, after the idea is born, it is then considered from a business perspective. Now, there's a difference between a hobby and a business. Yes. All right. Hobbies are done for fun or for enjoyment alone. Some hobbies make money, yes, but that isn't their primary goal, their primary function. Now, a business, however, takes into consideration many more aspects and is proactively planning on how they're going to become successful in the marketplace. Some would call this taking it seriously, but I think that some hobbies can still be somewhat serious. Uh, yeah, have you ever seen the people that do the cosplay? Yes. Some people take yes. that stuff people, people, very, very seriously. <laughs> a lot of the people that attend uh, Comic-Con, that is not their business. That is their hobby. It's really about taking interest in following the correct steps and making the right investments to bring your business into the marketplace framed for success and then setting the correct goals to, to make that happen. So in your business, if you haven't already, you need to make that decision. Are you content to have a hobby whose goal is self-enjoyment, or do you want a business whose goal is to reach a larger market and probably profit? A lot of profit? businesses want profit. So before you spend any money investing in your project, you need to set this in your mind because it changes things, okay? Owning a business while fulfilling is often a lot of work. Yes, yes, it now, is. Now, uh, you have to be prepared to put in the necessary work. Now, finding a professional to help is a smart investment, but you have to make sure you have the correct heart set from the beginning to keep everyone from wasting time and money, including yourself. I tell people, I can direct you in what to do, how to build and grow your business, but I can't make you do it. That has to come directly from the business owner. Right. What's the cliche? You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink Coca-Cola? Yeah, Coca -Cola? yeah. <laughs> yeah. Same, like same principle. You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. So that's the straight shot. So yes. today we got three lessons and a straight shot. So I think that's the close of our episode today. Okay. Tune in for the next episode of Straight Shot Marketing Podcast, where we continue in the Lessons from Coca-Cola series. And don't forget, please like or subscribe wherever you listen to your podcast on YouTube. Click the little bell to get notifications of when we release these adorable little episodes. And you can also sign up for text messages by texting the word Reformation to 90210. And sign up to support us on patreon.com forward slash straight shot. Our Patreon friends get early access to episodes, exclusive content, and straight shot merchandise. So check it out. So that's all we have for today, guys. Yep. Thank you so much. Join Until us for the next, next episode. Time. We'll see you later. Bye. Bye, guys. Thank you for listening. If you found this podcast informative, we hope you'll pass along our web address, straightshot.net to your friends, colleagues, and business associates, and please leave us a positive review on iTunes or on our Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash straight shot. If you would like to have your question featured on the show or would like to be a guest, call 678-825-8086, extension 300. Or you can email us at info at straightshot.net. Be sure to download the Straight Shot Podcast app on your smartphone to hear previous and new shows. You can also find us on Spotify, iTunes, or directly at straightshot.net. This has been Straight Shot.